attitude is a word with many linked meanings. It can mean uncooperative behavior, as in when a teenager storms off after a heated argument. Or it can mean individuality and self-confidence, as in, wow, she's got some attitude. Or attitude can be the way you're feeling and thinking about something. So all your emotions about a particular topic, event, person, or object make up the attitude towards it. Before we go any further, we're going to look at attitude from a psychological perspective um, and dissect it. So in 2005, psychologists Hoggs and Vaughan said that attitude was a relatively enduring set of beliefs, feelings, emotions, and behavioral tendencies. Firstly, because it's relatively enduring, we can say that while this set may be rigid and difficult to change, it is not permanent and can be manipulated. Secondly, since it's a set of beliefs, emotions, and behavioral tendencies, we can say that attitude will affect our emotions, our beliefs, and our behavior. In fact, attitude is made up of three components, also known as the ABC model, the affective, the behavioral, and cognitive component. So let's dwell in a little deeper and find out what these mean. Firstly, we have the affective component, which, in, uh, which concerns all your emotions and feelings towards something. So when you have an attitude towards a, part a particular topic, event, or person, your affective component helps you understand how you feel about that object. I'm going to let you think about that for a while. The second is the behavioral component, the cognitive, let's just say. Uh, and this encompasses all your thoughts, opinions, and reasoning. So this can help you understand the affective component because it gives you the reason for the feeling towards the out attitude object in question. Lastly, you have the behavioral component, which is basically the result of the first two components because your emotions and your cognitions affect and dictate how you behave. Now take a moment and try and apply this to yourself. Try and think of something that you have an attitude towards. It can be something as simple as an animal or a chore or as complex as a relationship or a person. Try and think of the effective component. How do you feel about that object? Does it make you feel happy, sad, optimistic, or even angry? Try and think of why you feel those and justify it. Is it because of the way someone else feels about it, or is it because you feel a certain way about that object? And then think about the behavioral component. If you were exposed to this object, how would you feel about it? Because that's how your actions will come to conclusion. Um, hopefully now, after my clum clumsiness of forgetting my words, um, you have a clear understanding of what attitude and its components are. But why am I standing here and telling you about attitude? You know, what's, what's the purpose? Why do we have attitudes? So remind yourself of what, um, remind yourself of the attitude you thought of before. And psychologists have tried to answer this question and come up with four functions. The first function is utilitarian. This looks like a really, really complex word to say, but it means something quite simple. And it means it when your attitude is utilitarian, it provides you with avoidance tendencies. So it helps you avoid what you want to desire. The second one is the, the knowledge component or the knowledge function. This helps you understand the information that's been provided to you. It can be information like politics or person or event or the information I'm giving you right now. The last one, the third one is ego defensive, but this is a self-esteem protecting attitude. And the last one is value expressive. This is the one where it reflects your central values and your beliefs and shapes our identity and social interactions. Now I'm going to take you back and I'm going to tell you to remind yourself of the attitude you thought of before. So when we were discussing the ABC model, the affective, the behavioral, and the cognitive components. Figure out its purpose. Is it an attitude towards something you want to avoid or desire? Is it an attitude towards information you recently received? 
Is it an attitude that is self-esteem protecting, or is it one that reflects your central beliefs or values? Now, the reason why I'm telling you to do this is because um, I believe that understanding the functions and the components is the underlining principle of becoming aware of them and later on controlling and even manipulating them. So this beautifully brings me to my conclusion. Uh, you can do one of two things with the information I've given you today. You can either absorb it and store it, or you can use it. You can use it for the better. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave you with a challenge, if you choose to accept it. I challenge you to think of an attitude that has neg negatively affected you or the people around you. And I would like you to dissect it in into its affective, its behavioral, and its cognitive components, so like we just did there. And from this deconstruction of attitude, I hope you form a clearer picture of how you can change it, whether by making appeals to its function or persuading yourself of more logical and beneficial attitudes, or by stopping the chain of components before your emotions uh, cause your actions and behavior. So I compel you to use this information and change your life, because we all have an ideal image of what we want to achieve and what we want to become. And I believe that attitude is the key to unlocking those goals. As Gandhi said, a man is but the product of his thoughts, what he thinks he becomes. Thank you.